Hi guys, welcome to Smart Revision. We are going to look today at energy profiles. We are going to look at the two kinds of reaction, which is exothermic and endothermic reactions. So if you've not seen my previous uh, video on exothermic and endothermic, I would ask you to have a look at that so you sort of get an understanding of what we are talking of. Now, in an exothermic reaction, heat is being given out. Now, as scientists and chemists, we like to X to represent the data has graphs. So this is exactly what we are going to do. So I'm going to have a graph which is going to look something like that. On my x-axis there, I'm going to have energy and this is going to be time or the progress of the reaction. Okay, so as time goes along, what actually happens. Now in an exothermic reaction, uh, the amount of energy that the reactants have is quite high already, okay? This is not going to react by itself. We need to do something or it needs to get something to actually have a successful reaction, which is what we call activation energy. Sometimes it's written as Ea. That means energy activation or activation energy. For this to happen, in this reaction, I am going to go to my reactants. Now this already has high energy. That means we can talk of like fuels, like petrol, diesel, methane, which is going to actually combust. So if it's got some oxygen in there, it's going to combust. These two will react, collide, and I will then have products formed. Okay? So that is my activation energy on the top there. The difference between these two, between the energy levels, is called enthalpy or enthalpy, however you want to pronounce it. and it's given a sign of delta H. So that triangle H, that may change in the energy levels. Okay. So that's an exothermic reaction. Got to also say, if it's an exothermic reaction, if I've got a number on here, it will be minus 286 kilojoules. If it's a minus, it's an exothermic reaction. Okay endothermic now. Same thing, I'm going to draw that as a graph. I'm going to have time and energy on this side. Now this is going to look totally different. First and foremost, the energy in the reactants is quite low. So if you look at the reactants mm -hmm. there and reactants there, they are low. So I need to give it a lot of energy. So I might actually be heating it up, heating it up, and then it's going to form the products. And then it's going to form products. You know, that's already no space on there. Again, activation energy is on there. So as you can see, I've got to actually give it a lot more energy. So. Three things that you might be asked to do on here. You might be given such a thing and asked to label the reactants and the products and the enthalpy change. Same thing on this one, reactants, products. And again, this is my enthalpy change. Now this one will be a positive. Okay, so that's how you can identify them as well. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You can lower the activation energy, and I can do that by using a catalyst. So this is going to speed the reaction up. So what does it do on these? It's quite simple. It actually provides a different pathway and we'll do that there. Okay. 
So it lowers the activation energy. Hopefully that makes some sense. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to comment. Um, I'm happy to go through anything else that you need. Uh, this is really important. It sort of will come as a three mark question or you might be given something and asked to just label it. Okay, so it's, it is really straightforward. But you just need to get your heads around it a little bit. 